Hi, my name is Mark Diaz, and on behalf of my co-authors from Google Research, Jigsaw, and Distributed AI Research, I'll give an overview of our paper crowd worksheets, accounting for individual and collective identities underlying dataset annotation. In this work, we review different issues and challenges in dataset development that relate to who annotators are in terms of their social identities, as well as how they experience annotation work. And we also propose a worksheet for dataset developers to work through different documentation um, uh, considerations and dataset development decisions. So our goal with this work is to contribute to documentation norms as well as prompt data set developers to consider how their development decisions potentially impact and are influenced by data annotators. Our audience in this is very explicitly data set developers. So we attempt to make a worksheet that is both structured and very clear. Um, but alongside the worksheet, we provide a review of literature describing who engages in crowd work, the importance of understanding their identities, and what this means for data set development more broadly. Now, this work builds on development and documentation frameworks that have previously been created in service of transparency and accountability. And we add unique considerations relating to crowdsource data set annotation. And we provide this worksheet as a tool for stepping through questions and considerations for task formulation, selecting annotators, choosing crowd work platforms and infrastructure, evaluating annotations, and releasing and maintaining data sets. So first, uh, I want to provide some historical context about data work. So crowdsource labor has been linked to piecework, which is a manufacturing innovation predicated upon treating workers and their individual tasks as interchangeable. Now, this understanding of work generates the notion of the, quote, unskilled worker. Um, and it's credited with giving rise to the productivity and ingenuity of American manufacturing. And while much digital work, like crowd work tasks and uh, uh, manufacturing, um, crowd work can be modular and easily distributed. But a piecework frame ignores the role that social position, identity, and lived experience play in how people, and by extension, crowd workers, apply their knowledge and expertise. And the importance of these considerations is perhaps most clear in highly subjective tasks. So th these are tasks like sentiment analysis, or hate speech annotation, where regional or cultural differences can shape salient interpretations of, of language and symbols. So with this context, now I'll step into the core themes uh, that are highly interrelated that we review uh, in this work. So the first theme is worker sociocultural identity. Um, there is also worker lived experience, compensation norms and working conditions, as well as uh, platform organizational structure. Now, sociocultural background can shape individuals' interpretations of ground truth. Um, the notion of, quote, one truth or a universal truth is a myth. Uh, and we see this in work from Laura Arroyo and Chris Welty uh, and their crowd truth framework, and where they describe various reasons for raider disagreement. So these uh, disagreements can be due to things like task design, where instructions may be ambiguous or unclear. Um, but disagreement can also be related to systematic differences in viewpoints and perspectives. In addition, social, cultural, economic, and infrastructural factors shape who does and does not do crowd work. In other words, it's not random. For example, in the US, uh, specifically, an ability to rate uh, and annotate from home attracts many mothers, which contributes to a disproportionate number of women raiders in the US compared to other geographic regions that skew more male. And these are important because sociodemographic skews can mean the skews in cultural values uh, or perspectives represented. And this is one motivation behind recent work that calls for machine learning developers to include sociodemographic information about the raiders involved in dataset annotation. With regard to lived experience, um, it experience with uh, and proximity to a problem domain can provide valuable expertise that's not always recognized or considered. 
So the average rater, uh, quote unquote average rater, in terms of gender or other social characteristics varies dramatically depending on which geographies raters are selected from. And this is important because experience in a problem domain can vary in accordance with different social characteristics. For example, women experience higher rates of sexual harassment online compared to men. And among folks who have experienced online abuse, women are more likely uh, than men to identify it as such. And this has implications for um, the perspectives captured in the labels uh, provided by a different mixes of, of annotators in an annotator pool. Compensation norms and working conditions are very core to responsible data collection. Um, however, the legal landscape can be inconsistent and or undefined. For example, in the US, there are no regulations around crowd worker pay. And this is important because compensation norms can lead to overwork and additional uncompensated labor, um, which has disparate impacts for workers in the global south, uh, where many, many crowd workers are located. For example, workers spend unpaid time seeking out paid tasks, and they're compelled to work long hours to compete for the paid tasks that are available. And another interesting um, aspect of uh, working conditions in data annotation has to do with psychological safety. Um, psychological safety for tasks like content moderation is impacted by NDAs and bureaucratic barriers to communication with requesters. And these barriers can limit worker options for seeking support, meaning they at times are uh, not able to discuss their experiences with others um, due to legal constraints, which, or they can risk being viewed as perhaps a difficult worker if they raise concerns with a platform or requester. In addition, um, top-down relations can limit valuable feedback about task clarity, label schema, and different rater understandings that might otherwise be dismissed as noise. Um, it's actually often the case that channels for feedback on task design um, or disputed work don't even exist on many platforms. Uh, and this makes the top-down structure hard to change uh, because they're, uh, this is sort of baked into the structure of these crowd work platforms um, and requires sort of major changes to the overall ecosystem of crowd work. Top-down organizational structure also leads workers to view requesters as more informed in the task domain. Uh, and in really interesting work by Milagros Maselli and colleagues, um, we can see how, that workers often make judgments from the standpoint of a requester, um, but with limited insight into the goals of annotation, which means that uh, workers are making a best guess as to what re requesters want without actually knowing what requesters' goals are in collecting data annotations. In addition, um, pay is typically provided for work accepted, not work completed. And a majority of workers have had work rejected and not compensated. Um, this can be due to unclear instructions of a task, so not the fault of a worker, but few feedback channels uh, make it difficult for workers to actually communicate this kind of confusion or, or provide feedback to requesters about um, correcting some, some ambiguity in their uh, task that they've deployed. And again, globalized work dynamics mean that workers in the global south uh, disproportionately bear the brunt of all of this. So next, uh, I'm going to quickly step through our worksheet. Um, I'll preface and say that I won't be going through all of the details of the worksheet, and I encourage you to check out the paper, not only to see more details about the motivations behind each section of the worksheet, but also uh, to be able to read through a hypothetical case study that we provide, where we answer all of the questions that uh, we lay out in the worksheet um, as an exercise of demonstrating how we would imagine uh, this worksheet to uh, be completed and what kinds of information we imagine uh, data set developers to provide through the worksheet. So the worksheet has um, five themes. There is task formulation, annotator selection, platform and infrastructure choices, 
data set evaluation, and data set release and maintenance. Um, each of these sections uh, features various considerations for crowd workers in making decisions um, about their data set uh, development choices, um, as well as a number of questions for uh, spurring documentation of, of each of these decisions. So first, there is task formulation, um, which features considerations regarding the subjectivity of a task, for example, uh, informed consent with uh, annotators, and also features questions related to, again, subjectivity, um, as well as how task instructions and questions are validated. The annotation selection um, section features considerations around the relationship between social identity and expertise. Um, as well as how labor practices might impact the uh, raters that ultimately make up the raider pool, particularly those from uh, marginalized communities. And um, some of the questions include whether there are perspectives uh, or values that might be harmful to include in a data set, uh, as well as simply providing sociodemographic information where possible about uh, the raider pool. The platform and infrastructure infrastructure section uh, includes considerations around uh, different platform choices and channels of feedback between, between requesters and workers. And the questions feature some straightforward questions like which platform was used, um, as well as what communication channels a platform offered or that requesters were able to uh, engage with workers through. The data set analysis and evaluation section features considerations around um, how uh, annotations are assessed after they've been collected. Uh, for example, whether uncertainty or disagreement has been analyzed to potentially reveal um, signal related to differences in, in rater viewpoints um, and features uh, questions to unveil some assumptions, for example, around how quality, annotation quality, is defined by the data set developers working on this data set. And finally, um, data set release and maintenance uh, features considerations around designing and sharing a maintenance plan, um, as well as thinking about conditions, uh, future conditions that might render data annotations and data collected um, obsolete or unhelpful. Um, and the documentation questions um, ask about some of these potential conditions and assumptions uh, about future circumstances that we're relying on in order for the data we've collected to be uh, valid. So all in all, um, we view this as a framework for reflecting on and documenting key decision points in crowdsource data set development. Um, I want to emphasize that this data sheet, uh, or sorry, this worksheet is not optimized for workflow speed, but that is intentional. We see this as a tool for reflection. And with that come questions about how uh, a worksheet like this might be more efficiently integrated into workflows for data set developers in the future. And with that, um, thank you for listening. <laughs>